We're just, we're just going to interrupt. Yeah, we're going to go straight to Dublin, where the police are holding a press conference. Between the awful attack, which happened at 1.30 in the afternoon, and then the subsequent disorder, uh, riot and looting in the city, in our city centre. It's just disgraceful scenes from start to finish. Uh, overall, we have 34 arrests, 32 of which will be appearing before the courts this morning. Uh, we have 13 shop, shop, uh, shops which have been uh, damaged, significantly damaged, or uh, have been subject to looting. Uh, we have 11 guard vehicles either destroyed Shopping, uh, shops are very extensively damaged and with three uh, buses, public transport buses destroyed and a Lewis train destroyed and also then the, as the extensive damage as I've set out. So huge destruc dis um, destruction from a riotous mob who were in, in effect responding um, at, a, at our crime scene to try and break into that crime scene and disrupt the crime scene at about uh, half five, quarter to six, and then from there on the violence escalated. Um, order was restored in about uh, between half eight and nine o'clock as we deployed more resources. Thank you. Any questions, Paul? Commissioner, uh, did you fail the people of Ireland? Did you fail the country? There's three hours uh, last night that you have said, some people would say longer than the calm was restored to the eleven o'clock last night. Did you fail the people of Ireland that then take the citizens and the city? No, the Angarda Shikana respond to this entirely and in, a, in um, an extraordinary fashion. Uh, members from across the country, not just here in DMR, responded, returned to duty. Public order units from all over Ireland responded here to Dublin. More and more resources were driving throughout the evening. But we could not have anticipated that in response to a terrible crime, the stabbing of school children and their teacher, that this would be the response. In, a, in effect, uh, those filled with hate and the hate directed towards members of Garda Shikana, that they would attempt to storm through our cordon and disrupt the crime scene and then engage in violence, looting and disorder, and including sig very significant criminal damage. Nobody could have anticipated that uh, uh, when these events broke, uh, when these events uh, started at 1.30, these awful events, and obviously we were concentrated upon the investigation we couldn't have anticipated that this would be the reaction. But well, people would say, why aren't you monitoring social media, the far-right groups, who you say uh, 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 exacerbated the situation? Why didn't you move quicker when you saw the build-up of tensions, both online and on the streets? Well, the build-up of tensions, as, as you describe on social media, we were monitoring those, and we were constantly then adding to our resources that were available uh, in DMR North Central. That was an ongoing part of the operation and we did respond, but uh, it has to be said that the crowds, the crowds of those in the first place protesting, filled with hate towards members of Garda Shikana, were then supplemented with those who were intent upon crime, disorder and the looting of premises. And one can see this morning, particularly uh, sports type shops were specifically targeted. Now, Garda reacted quickly uh, to that and uh, were able to clamp down on that looting, but um, we responded as the events unfolded. But I don't think at 1.30, as the, as the original events unfolded, or indeed later in the mid-afternoon, we could have anticipated such disorder. The Richard? Said this is a failure of training, it's a failure of resources, it's a failure of personnel, that these are problems they have spoken about for a long time. And they also say that's clear and happened last night, and we saw shocking scenes where individual guards were isolated and pursued and attacked well, this is not a failure of personnel. All, all members of Angarda Shikanda responded to this. Everyone stood up to the plate in terms of their response. I now have to look to the tactics that we have for public order. We have not seen public order situations like this before. This may be um, behaviour which is apparent in other countries, but I think that we've seen an element of radicalisation. We have seen a people who take, I think, that we've seen an element of radicalisation. We have seen hateful assumptions and then conduct themselves in a way which is riotous and, disrupt and, and disruptive to our society. We then have to respond to that in terms of our tactics and training. But there's no failure here. There's no failure. This is uh, regrettably how protests 
have moved on, and now we have to graduate and have a proportionate response well, to that. We saw something, well, we saw something similar a few weeks ago at the door. Uh, a few uh, months ago, well, we saw public representatives harassed and threatened outside our national parliament. Well, with respect, what happened last night was an entirely different response, or, or scale to the events outside the Dáil, and the Dáil has now received a new uh, policing response to the public order situations. Now, we have adapted our tactics there, but we're going to have to have a fundamental review of our public order tactics, given the amount of violence directed towards uh, citizens, members of Angarda Shikana, but also the community. Richard, yeah, sorry, sorry, can we go to Richard there? Sorry. Failed last night. Is this an sorry? The tactics failed last night. On O'Connell Street, there was for a good period of an hour where people were running lawlessly, people were fleeing in panic on O'Connell Street as buses went up in flames. I mean, is this an admission that you've got things wrong? Well, I'm not going to say things wrong. What we saw last night was an, ex an extraordinary outbreak of violence, and we have to then respond accordingly in terms of our. our uh, graduated response to the policing of disorder but th these are scenes that we have not we have not seen in decades but what is clear that people have been radicalized through uh, social media over the internet and so you have a terrible event and I don't want to lose focus on it on the terrible event in terms of the uh, assault dreadful assault on the school children and their teacher like that's a full investigation that's ongoing there's also a full investigation now in respect of the disorder and, and we have literally thousands of hours now of CCTV to trawl through. But many of these individuals, they are well known to us. They have criminal records. They've been in baller with us before. And we will go now through the long process of investigation and bringing them before the courts. You previously said this would be a graduated response that things would be, I mean, it was characterised in the media as being a softly, softly approach to far right demonstrations after what happened in Sandwich Street, an ancient protest at uh, centres being used for asylum seekers across the country. Surely now it's time for a tougher approach because things as they progressed last night, there was an on confrontation approach adopted by Gardaí. But clearly that just didn't work. And didn't well, the capital was last night, there was an on confrontation approach adopted by Gardaí. That just didn't work. Right from the outbreak of uh, the abuse of Gardaí, followed then by disorder, there was very clear direction given in terms of uh, what our response would be. But, and our response was in the first place more resources in the position then that we could make arrests. 34 arrests have been made, many more arrests will now follow. Individuals will be brought before the courts. Are you concerned that there will be follow up actions as a result of this? These groups are organising online. They might uh, try and follow up this even the days ahead. Well, that has to be a, a, a plan and assumption. Like we just we have to make that assumption that following the events of last night, that we're going to see uh, further such protest. Uh, in which case, then we'll have to put in place the police and response, and look then to the equipment and tactics that we can have immediately available to us to respond. Okay, Peter. tactics that we can have immediately available to us to respond. Okay, Peter. Uh, uh, Commissioner. How much more of a threat now do you feel that those, as you say, are driven by right-wing ideology pose to law and order? What will you be doing, what will the Guardian be doing to change and adapt to that from what we have seen last night? And just secondly, could you provide any update just on the, the actual assaults in terms of the condition of the five-year-old girl? Mm -hmm. and have, has an arrest been made? Is an arrest going to be made? Uh, and, and so on. Well, uh, in, in respect of the assault, investigations are ongoing. Uh, very significant inquiries were being conducted last night, but I have to say it's disgraceful that our inquiries obviously in the city centre were prevented and disrupted by the, by the disorder. Um, I understand <coughs> that the five-year-old girl uh, is still in a very serious condition. Um, the uh, teacher, uh, her teacher is also in a serious condition. Uh, no arrest has yet been made. But a suspect has been identified. And sorry, just on the first part of that question. How much of a threat now does the far right in Ireland pose? Has that changed from what you saw last night? As you said yourself, this stark levels of violence, looting, disorder, all sparked. I know you're going to say many of those uh, were opportunistic uh, participants and had nothing to do with the original issue, but it was clearly sparked by those, as you say, driven by far right ideology. How much has that name changed in Ireland? Well, uh, I would say um, I have to. I have to take note, and, and Garda Shikana, in terms of our intelligence gathering and investigation, now I have to, uh, well, will, will take notice of the change in attitude at the Cordon Point. 
the amount of abuse directed towards the Garda Shikana by significant numbers of those who were there, uh, in effect, breached our cordon, the breach the cordon of the crime scene. So that is a significant change we'll have to adapt in terms of our policing response, and that means then that our tactics in respect of public order, the equipment we have available uh, for members of Garda Shikana, will have to adapt accordingly as well. Okay. One over on the left, and then one last one over here, please. Are you concerned about it? Uh, well, uh, uh, regrettably, one member of Angarda Shikana quite a serious uh, injury, and uh, we have to find out today um, uh, how that member is and, and uh, what the developments are in respect of that. Uh, we had numerous other members injured, and we're collating the detail. A lot of members injured by. Uh, um, just in the riot in terms of uh, uh, things being thrown at them, projectiles being thrown at them, but also then uh, sprains, etc. And also it was an exhausting night in terms of just fast-moving situation and in effect those in, engaged in, in riot uh, moving through the city centre. Uh, of course, of concerns for the day. We have a planning meeting at 9 o'clock. We prepare for today and then the rest of the weekend. We need to we need to put in place a significant mobilisation of the organisation, but I also have to see immediately then what other tactics are available to me to deal with public order. Okay, last Mr. question down here. Sorry, last question down here. Sorry. Uh, sorry, just in regards to your advice to the public today, obviously a very busy shop today. Should they avoid parts of London city centre today, especially as, as it comes into the evening? Um, just secondly, uh, last night you were, you were sort of not in a position to rule out a terror motive. Is that still your position in regards to the initial attack? Um, in, re in regard to the initial attack, I'm, I'm not going to comment in respect of the motive because that is still not clear. The investigation is obviously focused upon uh, what the motive for this incident was in the first place. That is not yet clear and uh, so I'll not engage in speculation in respect of that. In respect of the city centre, people will see a very heavy guard of presence throughout the city today. I would encourage them to come to their work and uh, come and use the city. We call the city to be given over to the thugs, and to the looters and to the arsonists. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. That was Drew Harris, the police commissioner, speaking there in Dublin about what happened uh, overnight, the riots there. He talked about how 34 people have been arrested uh, and extensive uh, damage that there was, huge destruction, he talked about, by 11 uh, police vehicles damaged, four buses destroyed, also a train, uh, and 13 shops uh, were looted or damaged. He also talked about how um, groups of people had tried to break into the crime scene uh, and then after that, that, the violence escalated. The crime scene obviously referring to that attack outside a school uh, in Dublin uh, yesterday afternoon in which three children were stabbed and their teacher. He said that the one five-year-old girl is still in a serious condition in hospital and also the teacher as well is also still in a serious condition. He said that a suspect had been identified but no arrest uh, made in relation to that attack. He was also asked a lot about the police response and whether they responded quickly enough and asked why weren't you monitoring uh, social media and far-right groups that were active on social media last night and he said that uh, we could not have anticipated uh, these events uh, following on from that attack outside a school and he also talked about how they have, they're going through thousands of hours of CCTV uh, footage and he expected that more arrests will follow. That's the latest uh, here on what happened overnight uh, in Dublin. We'll be back with Anna Foster